Welcome back to Big Week on the Farm, and yes, you can see we've just got our new Manitou. Um, we changed the other one there after, I think it's over 5,500 hours was on it, and we just decided we'd change it because, just to keep it fresh, and we're going to get Kevin there to run through it. Right, we're here with Kev Shannon, new Manitou. Any new features? Yeah, there's plenty of M, so when Pa was on about, so he had one of these for five years already, hmm. and he, he changes them every five years, so he's on to about, me to about, about a new one. Um, which is pretty much the exact same as what he had, except um, there's a couple of little features. Obviously, the, this window goes right down now. So, yeah, I know and the that. older one, it used to, it used to um, only come to a, I say about there, and it was, it was yeah. probably a bit annoying on your elbow, but yeah. now it goes right down. Um, there's an electric handbrake in it now. Right. So you can have it. Well, you don't have. That's just an emergency handbrake. But as soon as you go to drive off, she'll get off the handbrake. Manager, so would yeah. Small and manager. when you stop, she'll put on yeah. the handbrake herself. Yeah. Um, another good feature on it is, is um, there's an eco stop on it. Right. So we've all, all these new Manitou's are on te telematics. Mm. So I can look up, or even Paul can look up what it's done, how many hours it's done, what Eight diesel, or even if there's problems, it'll send it to us if there's any problems. But um, it, we, and a couple of guys there, the let's say they have maybe a thousand or two thousand hours on them, 25% of the time they're idling, yeah. stop, no one in the seat. There, yeah. Yeah. So they've brought out this eco stop now that you can set it to 30 seconds, a minute, five minutes, 10 minutes, mm. um, and it'll shut it off completely. It'll even turn off the ignition and everything. So even if you're out in the field of bales and you're yeah. up the field, you go, oh shit, I never turned it off. You can go back and, it's or you don't have to go back, it'll turn it completely off. Yeah. Um, now, when Paul first bought his 737 off me, there were the normal Agri tires, yeah. and they lasted probably about 2,000 hours. Right. And then he went with these Mitchell and Bib loads on it. There but like, there's about 4,000 hours in these Mitch and Bib loads and like, oh, they're still, I'd yeah. say they're still 40 or 50%, so we decided we'd keep them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We saved money and he kept the r &M headstock. He's on a, all Volvo yeah. Euro headstock, so we kept the, the r &M hitch. We just put new pins and bushings in it and she's 100%. Um, other than that, it's practically the same. She's the full light package. Um, she's still the 3.6 litre four cylinder Dites engine. It's 130 horsepower. Mm. Um, she's a 150 litre in a pump. Um, other than that, she's practically the same. I know you were just saying there a few minutes ago, you were looking Service at service serviceability. Like, um, now, they've moved, they did have that filter was somewhere one, else, wasn't one it? filter around the back, then you need Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they've, they brought that to that. That's yeah. a, probably a, a good thing as well. But um, yeah, other than that, it's, it's pretty much the same. Walking around, I don't think there's anything else really. No. There's one little safety thing on it, on the joystick. It used to be you just pull the joystick or if you hit your elbow off it should move. Yeah. But there's actually an operator presence thing on the front of the joystick. It's just like a little sensor. Once yeah. it feels your hand is there, it let it move for 10 seconds. But mm. if your hand is off for 10 seconds, they cut it out. Safety so as well. it's a good job because even yeah. Darren was saying to me this morning that uh, she wouldn't move the boom from for mm. a while and then he got to move and it. And now we break stuff on you. So yeah, you just, I don't know, but it's, it's all safety, just in case someone just jumped in and hit yeah, the joystick. Yeah. So, um, but other than that, she's pretty much the same. Um, look, at, they go very well for us. That one, the Jews had went well. Well, he's a Ford so. Yeah. But um, yeah, look, at her. at least they're all the same now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They're all the same JSM joystick. Um, the cab is a nice thing and you have a full roof, a full view roof. Any much differences to the cab or just them little features? Or? Not really, yeah. Look, they've kept everything the same. They still have that real good step. Yeah. You have plenty of places to put stuff. You have a full car kit and a you know I mean? phone kit, full length uh, glass, you have full length uh, wiper. Um, yeah, it's pretty much it. It's not a bad place to be now, in fairness, when you're no. spending the whole day in it. No. So, um, best of luck with it. Hopefully. Video, yeah. we're Thank going you. to look at a tractor, yes. A John Deere 4040. An old tractor, they were made back in, I think from 1977 to 1983. We would have bought one on the farm back that time. It was brand new, out of the box. And my God, it was a fantastic tractor. A quick story about it was that uh, my father went to get the reg plate, the same as the 4040, and he actually missed it by one. In those days, you could nearly boot the, your, your reg plate. So he was looking for 4040, but actually he got 440, 4039 which uh, 
yeah, he did break his heart for a while, but he kind of got over it. So we got a phone call to say that uh, this chap was selling the tractor, he reckoned it was belonged to us, and when we looked at the tax book, he was right, it was belonged. So we have a 40 40, we actually have two of them as a his. We have a two wheel drive one and a, and a four wheel drive one that I would have bought just because they were such a fantastic tractor in their day. Um, we will look at we have a lot of great memories of the of the, the John Deere the 40 part when we bought it first. I think we bought it and, and it was put into a plough and looked up many things after that ended up in a side of the shaft. So it um, wasn't massively overly big on horsepower. I think it was 120 horsepower. It was a 5.7 litre engine in them, so they weren't, but they were big big for the day. And uh, when this thing came up, we said, yeah, we're going to have a look at it. So that's what I'm on my way over. Not too far away. It's only about uh, 50 minutes from, from the home place where we are in the yard. So I'm going to have a look at it to see what it's like. And hopefully, hopefully, we might be able to do a deal and get it back. Now, I can just imagine that, I suppose, at that age, that, um, it's not going to be what it was when it was back in the day. So a little bit of, of uh, TLC is probably required with it. But... Look, we're going to, going to have a look, see what it's like, and if we if it's good enough, we'll uh, we'll bring it back, and hopefully, hopefully, then at some stage, do a small bit of restoration on it, and uh, get it back to the farmer Tony. So yeah, there we are now, just heading on my way. Okay, so I know Dennis, you're okay, you're okay. Yeah. Don't worry, but he's he's a bit anxious here with the camera, but don't worry about that. We have located the forty forty. It's here outside Minute. Isn't that right? Yeah. Um, and I'm here with Dennis Dunn. Dennis has acquired the tractor. You have it how many years? Uh, 13 years. 13 years. And uh, as you can see, she's in the background there. Yeah, look at I mean, when I seen the tractor, when I seen the textbook, and I seen my father's name, and I suppose it brings out back all those memories, doesn't it? Ah, yeah, very good. Yeah. Uh, what were you using it for here for mostly? Uh, just a bit of rolling and chain harrowing. Yeah? Every yeah. Year, yeah. So she, she was well able, well able for that, uh, yeah, say, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, the four-wheel drive <laughs> scrape when you got to the ground, got a bit wet, so very yeah. good, yeah. Well, look, I'm just going to have a quick look around it. As you can see, she's in the background here. I'll whip the camera around. Uh, and we can see her there, yeah. Dundee F4040 S. Um, as we say, in around 120 horsepower. And she's all there. That's one thing you can say about it. Uh, good tires on here in the front. A little bit dirty around the engine there. A little maybe bit of oil there, or maybe a bit of diesel. Uh, inside of the cab. Yeah, there were a big old cab, big seat in them. Everything I think was built around the seat. So. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad now. Doesn't look too bad. So here we have the 4040S, reg plate for Pro 39AI, just couldn't get the 4040 inside in the cab, see his good or not. cab just a little bit tacky there but probably will need a little bit of TLC as regards the interior. Um, hydraulics, yeah definitely was, bought from Mead Farm Machinery. And yeah, doesn't look too bad now. We'll, uh, I think we we'll get her loaded here now. So we've done the deal with Dennis. He's happy to let her go, and we're happy to take her. And we have John B down with the low loader, and he is going to load her up. So we we'll tip on down now. Hopefully she starts now, and we we'll get her loaded up. So we had a little chat with Dennis here, and we did agree on the price. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah yeah he was happy to let her go and we were definitely happy to take it so yeah we have a bit of work ahead and i know yeah. the, the mechanics in the yard to be well they might be just over delighted to see yeah. it dennis but yeah. yeah just wishing the mechanics best of luck working on the tractor uh, it was a nice tractor love the tractor hate seeing it going away but it's going to a better place and um well, uh, well I, I wouldn't say it's going to a better <laughs> place now I, I wouldn't get carried away there oh, but no, it is, it is, it uh, is, yeah, but yeah, yeah no he, he, he definitely loved the machine it was uh you can see by that is it was it was hard just to just just to let her go but he is happy and as we say we're happy to take it there yeah. so we're just going to hopefully it'll start then yeah, after yeah, all this yeah. and we're talking about it anyway we're just bigging yeah. it up and, yeah. and, and we'll start yeah, and yeah, hopefully we, will, yeah. we have the one and only john well, b john what do you reckon yeah. huh be good to go it looks good anyway i'd say she's ready for the four for a player there are we <laughs> straight away the seven for him and the maybe the seven for her yes <laughs> so uh, john is here to pick it up we have the new little other there as well yeah. and it's probably one of the first trips uh, it's going to do, yeah. Going to do so, uh, yeah. Go on, see where the staff right. and get her going. All right. Hold me close till I get up. 
Time is barely on our side I don't want to waste what's left The storms we chase are leading us And love is all we'll ever trust Yeah, no, I don't want to waste what's left And I Jack, we've done a hair test on Monday and we're just reading them here on here. Come in here to me, into the background here. You can see who we are. But we don't be shy, don't be hiding out there. So, uh, this is our second hair test. Isn't it? Second hair test. All good so far. So, all good so far. All good so far. All good so, far. Yeah. so, fingers crossed. So, fingers crossed. If, if this is a clear test, then we don't have to test for another. Okay. So, we're going to let the boys walk away. It's pretty nice in the background. Bit of an ordeal when you have to bring them up to this farm here. We just have an outside crush, and as you can see there, Alex in the background, um, we made the crush up here so as we can access and bring them around the fields and bring them up here. So, a little bit of a uh, they're not used to it, yeah. They're not used to it, yeah. They're just not settled, so um, and a good job to get them in because they're only in on Monday, so they're no fools, like, yeah. They don't want to come, back, don't want to come back in again, back in again, like you know. They'd be well used to being tested there, they know when they get the first jab there, it's only a couple of days until they're going to go again. Right, okay, so I love this uh, Hopefully now. No, we're going well. We're going well, we're well. Going we're going well. well. Fingers crossed. Go we've checked all them, so they can go. Right, okay. So we're just going to get a quick overview from Kieran there to why is TB testing and why do we have to test so often and what brings on TB in, in kind of areas like this or, or in most farms, I should say, across the country. Okay, so TB is a bacterial infection, cattle get it, and unfortunately there are other sources of infection as well that we have the same control over in wildlife. Yeah. Um, and the general pattern is that wildlife give it to cattle, yes. and occasionally cattle give it to one another. Right, okay. That's the, that's the gist of it. And So um, uh, all herds do have to go through from, uh, from uh, the Department of Agriculture? Uh, every, it's, test it's, ha every herd has to have a test once a year. Yeah. And, Unfortunately, in, in areas where there's a lot of TB, it might be more frequent than that. Yeah, and I know people talk about badgers, they talk about deer, they talk about, but it's wildlife in general that can bring it on. There's nothing specific yet. Badgers, I suppose, are the most, most implicated, they're the most common, and in areas where there's no TB, 10% yeah. uh, of badgers can have TB. Now, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with healthy badgers. No. Uh, Tired of them or anything like that. No, by no means. Yeah. Well, the Arab protects species too, to a degree, and that's correct. That's yeah, well, look at. And, the, and deer, look, there's a little bit of a problem with deer as well, so um, it really depends on where your land is, yeah. what wildlife it's in contact with, whether you're buying in stock as well, that's a risk. If you're buying an animal, that might be ruined, the problem. Yep. You know, so, but you've essentially been most hurt. Yeah, well, uh, that's it. Not a bull here and there, but, yeah. You know, no, no, it would be a close out. Yeah. No, I know we're looking over here. We have a bull in the pen here, and he's just a little bit excited. And we're just just keeping an eye on him now. There is another herd coming in here to get tested, so I suppose when he when he sees them, there he'll be fine. But it does cause a little bit of disruption also, always when you when you do a herd test because you you have young stock and and cows and that. And I mean, you put them in a crush scenario, get them into a pen. You know, they can get a hurt, can't they? Yeah, they can agitate, especially if they're isolated and they're used to being in a group, you know. Yeah. Um, and I suppose the two, 
you know, two animals of risk are a, a, a bull and also a cow that has a very young calf, which is determined to protect, to protect. Calf, yeah. you know, yeah. so, so we do have to health be... and safety issues and uh, we have to take precautions and take our time and not take any unnecessary chances. Right, well we have the next herd coming in, as you can see, the Pied Piper is leading them in there with the bucket and uh, the following jack, so they're going to come in next. We have a bull here in the pen and he has definitely settled out the minute he's seen them, so we'll, uh, we'll get this patch in and hopefully they will be they will have a clear out. I know bothered you. Here's all the lovely memos. Wait for the taxi lad. <laughs> How much uh, a mile are you for the fair? <laughs> Ten up ahead, but we're easy on it. Yeah, yeah, not too bad at that. Just go up here and loop around and load up. We have Owen Finnegan on the way down with the pram behind the jeeps. You bring the few stragglers? You bring the few stragglers there. I don't know if you can see, we might see from the top of the hill there and it just won't be long to figure it out when we're bringing the cattle out of here. It's approximately when there was, it's gone down a bit but there was definitely four or five acres underwater here yesterday and the day before and there's more rain forecast for the night so I'm just going to pull the plug in this farm so they're going to another out farm up the road, it's about seven or eight miles away. Uh, they have the top of the hill here, but it's a bit of roughage. These be heifers now that be calving down around two year old. I want to uh, put them out to a bit of after grass. They haven't seen after grass yet. The on the run was a bit of roughage, so you can see that all you're missing is a few ducks. Fairly bad, all right. You go for uh, a swim. It's gone down a lot now. It's all that wetland area there. That was all covered. A lot of it was covered actually yesterday with a good day yesterday evening and we had a good day today now a lot of it's out but it's just July summed up. Yeah, July and we're still stuck in the month of March I yeah, think, are we? Yeah, 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 yeah. So Jack, final conclusion now, how did you get on? Right, so as you might have seen in the previous clip there, if you're watching the video, Paul, it was Paul down the care on there, we were in the middle of the hair test. Ah. We were after testing uh, two groups of cattle out of eight in total. So, um, long old day, but it was worth the work in the end because good result, no TB, TB free now. Yes. For, so. uh, obviously, you'll have to test again another six months or whenever it be, but at least it's a good sign now because we can sell, we have options now, whereas before we had only one option and that was the factory, so. Yeah, so you're back to normal yeah, now. Yeah, back to normal much. now, thank God. It was a good result after a hard day's work. Yeah. A lot of work went into it between testing on Monday and reading on Thursday. It was, it was a busy old week, but um, so we're just getting back to normal today, moving cattle around and these cattle here, they're going to go to an out farm seven or eight miles up the road, so we're going to load them up now and bring them up there. These be heifers that we will calve them down around two year old, scan them, we scanned them about three weeks ago. The scanning rate wasn't overly great this year all across the board on every farm. <sighs> predominantly down to, I heard a lot of people giving out about heat stress there in the month of May. A lot of cows not coming in heat and bulls being lazy because of the warm temperatures, but I don't know. But uh, I think uh, the 22 heifers here, there was four scan nut and calf, and there's one the vet wasn't sure of, but we're just gonna take a quick scan now in uh, probably another two weeks time, and just see, we'll scan them four or five and see what the results are, and we'll come to a conclusion then. Yeah. So for now they're going to be moved up to the road, up the road there, to a bit of after grass there. They haven't had a bit of sweet fresh grass since they went out. So. And so we get them moved up to that there now, and we've all the help with us here now, including myself. It's rare I get involved in this <laughs> crack now, but you're, I'm here anyways. You're here now, and that's all that matters. I'm here now, it's right, it's right. Should we get all these moved up anyways, and should these be fantastic news on that front? Yeah. So we get these moved regardless, and we get all. So, once this is down, now you're going to be the barrier. Yeah, <laughs> some barrier. The, the last form of defence. Try that fence there. Uh... Ha! Ha! Hello! 
Go, Skate! Go, go, go! 